Welcome back to Chicago. This is the 353rd consecutive sellout going back to their days at Chicago Stadium. And tonight for the New York Knicks, who have lost two straight five of the last seven on the road. Look at the starting lineup. Derek Hopper and John Starks in the backcourt. Both have had their shooting difficulties, in particular, John Starks. And on the front line, Patrick Ewing, Charles Smith, and Charles Oakley again giving it a shot with that dislocated toe. And the coach of the New York Knicks, Pat Riley, a man who's taken his teams to the NBA Finals eight times in 12 years, winning four NBA championships with the L.A. Lakers. For the Chicago Bulls, in the backcourt, the combination of B.J. Armstrong and Ron Hopper. And Hopper has been on the disappointing side to this point. Up front for Chicago, Will Perdue making it back from a broken nose. He had missed four games. Scotty Pippen, who is off to a strong start. And the rookie from Providence College, Dickie Simpkins. So there you have the starting lineups. And there's Phil Jackson in his sixth year as coach of the Bulls, one of a select group, one of ten people to win a championship as a player and as a coach. The officials, Bob Delaney, Steve Javi, and Nolan Fine. Friday night, here at home at the new United Center, the Bulls beat Indiana convincingly 116-92 after losing to the Pacers in Indianapolis, while the Knicks last played Thursday night at Madison Square Garden. They blew a 16-point first-half lead and lost to Cleveland. 93-90, although the Knicks shot 53% from the field. The Bulls controlling the opening tip. Hopper's pass picked off by Smith. Starks hearing it from the crowd right at the start. And here's Charles Smith. Well, the New York Knicks want to establish an inside game, and they will look for Charles Smith and transition at every opportunity. Other than that, they're going to try to punch it into you. Simpkins way off on the follow, and Hopper has a three-on-two development. Hopper had it knocked away by Simpkins. Well, historically, this Knicks ball club going back to last season and especially late in the playoffs, always looking to run best breaks as many as they can get early in the ball game. They'll do it for maybe a quarter, and then it seems to wane as the game goes on. Yes, not too much running recently as Oakley is able to hit. The Knicks, strange as it sounds, because they have not been noted for running right throughout a game, opened the season the first three games looking to run, but that ended very quickly. Well, that's the way they played in the preseason without you. What's Patrick out there? Things change. Ron Hopper has been trying to find the touch. So the Knicks with a 4-2 lead. Starks for three. Yes. John Starks, who did have a good one on Thursday against Cleveland. 5 of 10 from the field. 17 points, looking to distribute the ball, played well defensively, able to hit on his first attack. Pippen not able to put it down. Good hustle, though. Pippen got it back. Pippen with much room. Fires. Yes. Three quarters for Scotty Pippen. And Scotty took all kinds of time to find out exactly where he was on the floor and made sure both feet behind the three-point line. The Knicks seven and the Bulls five. The Knicks have hit their first three shots. Ewing for Oakley. And Starks gets to it on the back tap. And then off the screen. Armstrong pushes it down. Harper with room. And it's rebounded by Ewing. We are just underway at the United Center in Chicago. with a 9-5 advantage. Well, he blew by uh, Scotty Pippen on the first drive, just did not take enough time to finish on the play. And Scotty Pippen hits the three again. The Knicks 9, and the Bulls 8. The Knicks have lost four in a row, six of the last eight. But what is most disturbing for Pat Riley, they forfeit going down the stretch. Air ball thrown up by the one-time Chicago Bull, Charles Oakley. The last two games, they had the lead against New Jersey, but blew it in the second half. Here's the mismatch, and the Knicks have had all kinds of problems with big guards being isolated, but Pippen gave it back. Hopper not able to hit the three. 
And right away, Charles Smith coming down to double team and help John Stark. Something the Knicks were not doing in the early part of the season. They had made a commitment to start doing it now. They had gotten burned too much. Loose ball foul is called. A text winner telling me before the ball game that a big key for Chicago is the shooting of Scottie Pippen. When he shoots 48 or close to 50 percent, the Bulls generally play well. That time he made sure he's behind the three-point line. And here just eyeing the rim as the defense not coming up on him. And now normally Scottie Pippen does most of his damage going to the basket when he starts making his jumper as well. He's very dangerous. And Pippen has hit two of four, both three-pointers. The Nick foul was called on Patrick Ewing. Pippen trying to get it to Purdue. Starks with the steal. Hopper putting the move. And Derek Hopper is able to go around Ron Hopper to give the Knicks an 11-8 lead. Pippen for three. Again, Scotty Pippen from downtown for the third time this first quarter. And he's tied the game at 11. And right away, Pat Riley going to his bench right now to Anthony Mason, not happy with the way that Scotty Pippen has gotten off. Good luck from Oakley to find Smith, and the Knicks now lead by two. Yes, Anthony Mason getting set to come on. Will Purdue. Will Purdue playing with the protective mask because of the broken nose. Hopper with a nice move to unleash the jump shot. Start of the season in very strong fashion. Recent games did not shoot well, and he's off to the fast start here. Foul is called on Starks. John Starks, not a popular figure here in Chicago. Uh, John has gotten himself into early foul trouble in a lot of games in the early part of the season with the hand check. That time it wasn't a hand check. He just came up and hit Ron Harper in the head. In clear view of the officials, and Mason has come in to try to slow down Scotty Pippen. Anthony Mason replacing Charles Smith. The Knicks have a two-point lead. Hey, 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 hey. Purdue over Ewing. Ewing got a piece of it. Possession. Purdue tried to draw up the foul as he hit the deck, but it's called on Will Purdue. That is his first. Now, Will Purdue was very upset last year not being included on the playoff roster, mainly because he has some of his best games in the, against New York, mainly on the offensive boards, but he has all kinds of problems trying to guard that Patrick Ewing just does not have the quickness or the strength to deal with him. Not a different situation for him. Is able to hit over and the Knicks now lead by four. In the past, he would be successful because he would provide a changeup coming in after Bill Cartwright or perhaps after Bill Wellington. But now Purdue is in the starting lineup, so it has to go against Ewing right from the opening tip. And Cartwright's value was to wear down Patrick Ewing, but Purdue did most of his damage on the offensive boards when Michael Jordan was on this team because that's where the focus of the defense was. Foul is called on Mason as a timeout is taken. We'll be right back. Scotty Pippen off to the strong start, hitting three from downtown prior to the season. Even during the season, there have been reports of a possible Scotty Pippen package deal either to Seattle, Miami, Washington was mentioned, but Scotty is still a Chicago Bull. We, we asked him his reaction to all the trade speculation. Well, I look at it as something in the past, you know, it's something that I uh, don't have any control of. Um, if the management would like to trade me or whatever, then, you know, I'm going to still go out and do my best as long as I'm a Chicago Bull player. Uh, that's something that's totally out of my hands, whether or not I'm here today or tomorrow, but I know as long as I'm here, I'm going to get my best. And these trade rumors and thoughts started with 1.8 seconds to go in Game 3 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals when Scottie Pippen refused to go in for that last play. And uh, a lot of thinking around Chicago and in the inner circles was that the Bulls might be trying to trade Scottie Pippen to punish him to show that that just can't be done to their organization. I think that would be a mistake. If it was to improve their ball club, get a strong cut, a younger player, and build with that kind of a young superstar, that would make a lot of sense. Thanks for the 17-15 lead here. Starks for three. Well, John Starks with his second three-pointer, and the Knicks now lead 20-15. to 15. We talk about the Knicks shooting problems, but they are off to a good start. Here's Pippen from deep. Rebounded by Ewing. The Knicks are 9-15, 60% from the field as we hit the halfway 
point of this first quarter. Mesa looking to post up an illegal defense for the first time on the ball. Well, Purdue with his foot on the other side of the foul line in the red painted area with Patrick Ewing above the top of the key. You just cannot straddle that line. Once you cross that line, you have to go double team. Watch what Purdue's right foot on the bottom left of your screen. No double team on Anthony Mesa. does not get a, a lot of block shots, but he's patrolling the lane here right now as he went up and did touch it over the rim and also touched the rim as he hit the ball. Actually, the ball, the ball was initially blocked by Nick So Charles Oakley gets credit for the field goal. Derek Harper called for the foul. Looking for the steal on B.J. Armstrong. Harper staying in the backcourt. Armstrong, seven point lead for the Knicks. 10 of 16 from the field here at the start. So Simpkins for Armstrong. Two point range. And back comes Starks. The Knicks have hit their last five shots. And a reach in foul called as Ewing put the ball on the floor. Will Purdue, Will Purdue call for his second, and he'll be replaced by Bill Wennington. Bill Wennington has had some good moments over the years against the New York Knicks. Well, he can step away from the basket at about 15 to 17 feet and draw Patrick Ewing away, and Bill Wennington shoots that jump shot so well. So far, the Bulls are waiting for Patrick Ewing to put the ball on the floor before they come down and double team. Starks changed his mind. Ewing operating against Weddington. And the foul on Weddington. These two guys faced each other back in their college days in the Big East. Bill Weddington at St. John's and Patrick Ewing at, at Georgetown. And the rivalry has continued in the pros. The Knicks lead by seven. We come about five minutes to go in this first quarter. Ewing's pass broken up, and Oakley was fouled. Well, the Bulls are really mixing it up now as to how they're coming down and double Patrick Ewing. The last time when he drew the foul on Wennington, nobody came here. Pippen came on the catch. Patrick read it beautifully, looked right underneath the basket. The diver, Charles Oakley, they have been connecting well throughout the year on that particular play and look for each other very nicely. The rookie Dickie Simpkins called for the foul. Here's Hopper for three. And rebounded by Hopper of Chicago. Now Hopper, no relation to Derek Hopper. Incidentally, a teammate of Michael Smith, who has played so well for the Sacramento Kings. The Knicks lead 22-17. Starks feeling the shot. He's been looking right throughout the floor. Here's Ewing. Mason had it knocked away. And the officials check with each other and call for a jump ball. And Scotty Pippen does not like the call discusses it with Bob Delaney. Did you see those glasses Bob had on before the game? <laughs> the Coke bottle? <laughs> he, he said it was a Christmas present, but they were not for game use. <laughs> so Pippen and Oakley on the jump. on the road have won five and lost seven overall. Here's Oakley. Yes. Charles Oakley missed four games because of the dislocated toe. Made his return against Cleveland on Thursday and played one of his best games of the season. And he's hitting his shots here in the early going. Another next steal. Starks with three balls getting back. Pulls it up. Knicks by seven. Starks lost the dribble off his foot. 
Well, Pat Riley has been after John Stark to get involved in other phases of the game and not just rely on that jump shot. He wants John driving to the basket to try and either get a field goal, draw a foul, or make another pass. He also wants him to do more things at the defensive end as well. Bill Jackson getting set to send on Tony Kukoc, who comes off a very strong game. And Pete Myers, who has played well against the Knicks. Another bad pass, turnover number four by Chicago. Mason with the pull up. Ewing with the slam. And the Knicks now lead 26-17. And so far, Mark, the Knicks have been the much more alert team. They are quicker to the loose ball to catching in more. The Bulls look like they're running in water, and this is the way they have played in this building since the beginning. Hopper going for the steal is called for the foul. There's Anthony Mason letting that shot go, gets a piece of the rim, but Patrick Ewing trailing on the play, followed it all along, and nobody for Chicago ever got a body on him. One more time, Patrick Ewing get a clear lane to the basket as Dickie Simpkins was naughty there. stocking. So Ewing with a second field goal, and now Simpkins to the free throw line. Greg Anthony is getting set to come on for the Knicks. Anthony will replace Hopper, who has picked up two fouls. Greg Anthony has been a very pleasant surprise. He's been shooting well. His shot selection has improved. And he has tried to show Pat Riley that he is thinking past first and then shot. There have been a couple of occasions where Pat has reacted, but uh, Anthony has had a solid season. They have to be happy with those percentages, but of course with Pat Riley, you always have to do the job at the defensive end, and they think some of his defense has dropped off. Marks off the mark with a three-point attempt. Here comes Myers. Steve Kerr, who just came on. The Simpkins, who will put it back outside. Well, since uh, Anthony Mason has come into the ball game, I don't think Scotty Pippen has gotten a touch on the ball yet. Technical foul has been called. A technical foul on Scotty Pippen. So Scotty frustrated, didn't like a call earlier. And uh, right here, he was called for a foul, and it led to a technical foul. Timeout has also been taken, but Scotty Pippen was hot. 2.42 remaining first quarter. Thank you, had a 419 to go in this second quarter. And the Knicks with a three-point lead. Matt, bittersweet memories for one of the inhabitants of a new luxury box at the uh, United Center. Always nice to keep the uh, the photo of Chicago Stadium handy. Well, a lot of fond memories of that building. I know we always like to go there and broadcast more, but I played there for parts of three years. It was just a fantastic building and, uh, with uh, all kinds of tremendous memories. Bill Wellington with his third field goal. He's at three out of five for six points. The Knicks by one. Hubert Davis and Derek Hopper now at the guards. Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley, Anthony Mason on the front line. And Ewing draws the foul once again. Well, Wennington's strength is the fact that he can step out on the floor, try to draw that big man away. No way Patrick Ewing can get out there in time to challenge that shot as Bill Wennington has had a lot of good looks at the basket as Pat Riley knows that just too difficult right now for Patrick Ewing to get out there in that, that type of play. It has been a tumultuous season for the New York Knicks. We talked about the, the knee problems of Patrick Ewing, John Stark shooting difficulties. We touched on that earlier. The Knicks crushed by the Magic in Orlando. Patrick Ewing upset at one point with John Starks for questioning his shot selection during a game in Atlanta. John Starks and Rick Anthony benched by Pat Riley. The toe problems of Charles Oakley. An alleged squabble between Anthony Mason and John Starks on a recent charter flight, which uh, both have denied. Here's Armstrong on a fadeaway. And a loose ball loose foul. Ball Wellington. It's on Mr. Wellington. Pat Riley also at one point upset with the log jam on the roster, which eventually led to the departure of Doc Rivers.
Spurs, who ends up with the San Antonio Spurs. And uh, Matt, how about that wild report the other day that Riley would eventually be headed to Orlando, which Pat angrily denounced. And he does have one more year left on his uh, contract, but it's the way it's it's gone for the Knicks, who have been struggling, losing three straight at home, four straight overall but as uh, Pat mentioned to us earlier today it's a long season a lot of things can turn but it's a daily soap opera for the New York Knicks and of course compound all the problems off the floor with not winning games and on a four game losing streak it makes it that much more difficult the players the coaches they just kind of go into their room Marvin just throw a blanket over their heads don't read don't watch TV just concentrate on playing basketball now would you ever tell that to your your ball club I never believe that coaches and players don't read the papers. I mean, that's, you know that's nonsense. Here's Pippen, and it cuts it to a three-point lead. Well, you can't avoid it, Marv, because somebody, even if you don't read on a particular uh, day or two, somebody's going to tell you what so-and-so said. So you're always informed in general about what's going on. But you can make a conscious effort to stay away from it as much as possible. Traveling violation. Well, if uh, you're in the New York area, all you have to do is pass the newsstand, <laughs> and you'll get a, a little taste of it. A montage of what uh, the uh, Knicks, Knicks have uh, seen right throughout, and uh, understandably, there have been a number of uh, intriguing situations. Charles Oakley called for the foul. That is his second, and Tony Kukoc will go to the line. Well, the Bulls always make a conscious effort of spreading the floor against the New York Knicks. The Knicks are such a good help defensive team, but they want to take them out, oh, maybe 28, 30 feet, spread the floor as much as possible, so then when they get the driving situation, as Tony Kukoc just did, it makes it that much more difficult for the Knicks to come over and help out. Tony Kukoc missed his first two. He's a 74% free throw shooter. And now looking to convert his uh, second straight. He just uh, went over and said something to, uh, Tony. to Tony. And he nodded, which means he has no idea what he said. Perhaps Bob was telling him about those humorous uh, glasses that he's wearing before the game. will jump it up. The basket will not count. It's a tie-up. Good play by, I should say, uh, Purdue and Mason. Good play by Will Purdue. And amongst some of the problems the Knicks having on the basketball floor, for whatever reason, they have really dropped down near the bottom of the league in offensive rebounding. That should just not happen when you have people like Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley, Anthony Mason, Charles Smith, big bodies who have a sense of when shots are going up and should get to the offensive board. They haven't done it this year. Here's Pippen fouled by Harper. Crowd reacts. Harper was trying to brace the fall, and it... Uh, will not be a flavor. That's what the crowd wanted. Derek Harper just wants to make sure here that Scotty Pippen doesn't make the lay. A little shove in the back, but he just wraps him up and holds his arms and then makes sure that Scotty Pippen does not run into that basket stanchion, which, by the way, Mark, that stanchion used to be about four or five feet closer to the end line at both ends at the beginning of the year. The Bulls had that change, and of course, they also wanted to change that basket at the other end as Phil Jackson is trying to get comfortable in this building and get his ball club comfortable. They just aren't yet. Hopper sits down after picking up his third, replaced by Anthony. Hopper leads with four points. The Bulls are not a good free throw shooting team, only 70% at the line. Pippen has 16 points. He's the high man for Chicago. Kukoc with 12. Here's pressure by the Bulls. Mason had it knocked away, but then recovered. The game is tied at 49. Hey! 
Anderson lost it and then recovered. It's a three on one. Davis for three. Yes. Hubert Davis, who has not been shooting well, converting on his first field goal attempt, and he does it from downtown. The Knicks 52 and the Bulls 51. We're approaching one minute remaining in the half. Spreading the floor now, Kerr from Pippen. That's one you rarely see from the Steve Kerr arsenal. He is definitely not comfortable cutting across the lane, having to flip up a left hand hook against Patrick Ewing. Ewing. So Patrick Ewing will head back to the free throw line. He was fouled in the act by Purdue, his third. Tony Kukoc getting the kick out here from Scotty Pippen as he got raked across the arm there, and he is talking a language I'm sure nobody in this building. Well, there's a lot of Croatians here in Chicago. So they probably know exactly what he's saying there as he did get hammered by Anthony Mason. Ewing had hit his first five from the line. Pete Myers will come on now. Will Purdue departs. Patrick Ewing has had a superb first half. 13 points, nine rebounds, four assists, two steals, and a block shot. This one of his better performances of the season in terms of all-around skills. And Pat Riley will point out to his team at halftime that Patrick Ewing can not only do this for himself, but help the teammates as well, if we will get the ball inside to him on a consistent basis. The Knicks lead by two, 35 seconds remaining in the half. At 53, 14 points for Tony Kukoc. Pippen and Kukoc have combined for 30 of the Bulls, 53 points. They double up on Anthony. 20 seconds to go on the half. Pippen now guarding Ewing, who backs his way. And the foul is called against the Bulls. It's on Pippen, his second. Patrick Ewing is going to have to check his tape job on his ankles here as Tony Kukoc off the dribble with a little bit of a head fake to the right and just blows by Patrick Ewing and nobody for New York can get there in time mainly because that floor is spread but you know, that closer three-point line helps Kukoc he's shooting a good percentage from out there and you got to respect that shot a little bit and that enables some driving opportunity for him as well Ewing seven of eight at the line Kuko just under 40% from three-point land. 15 seconds remaining first half. The Knicks 55 and the Bulls 53. And Tony Kukoc will be the point guard in this situation. They'll try to spread it for him again. Charles Oakley will have his hands full. And a five seconds. One-on-one -on -one move. Again, Kukoc with the step. He's set up. Final seconds of the half. Davis off the shot clock. Well, a terrific first half, in particular for that man. Tony Kukoc, 6 of 8 from the field, 14 points in all. The Bulls and Knicks are tied at 55 here at the new United Center in Chicago. Now, stay tuned for the Prudential Halftime Report. It's coming up with Hannah Storm right after these messages. Well, John Starks getting ready for the start of play in the second half just moments ago while the teams were warming up over on the Nick bench. John Starks in deep thought preparing for the second half. Starks, two of four, hit two three-pointers, six points. In the first half, John still trying to turn it from the poor shooting. And Matt, he has admitted that the two for 18 in the seventh game of the NBA Finals against the Houston Rockets has had an effect. In fact, he said he couldn't look at the tape of the game. And then finally, uh, during the West Coast trip, off the leg of the Bulls, and then off the uh, 
during the West Coast uh, trip, as you see the uh, rundown of the leading scores, Ewing with 16 and Pippen with 16 leading their, their clubs. He finally took a look at the tape as if to get it out of his system. Charles Smith gives the Knicks a, a two-point lead. I heard he turned the sound down, too. Yes, and I asked him about the tapes. He said, you know, the graphics were very, very good. <laughs> Color commentary, so-so. <laughs> to be a miserable summer for John and then off to a terrible start this year and that little meditation at halftime. He's got to be trying to do anything he can to get himself going. They had a good shooting game and that loss against Cleveland the other night has had a good first half so far here. Hopper and Starks in the backcourt. Ewing, Smith, and Oakley up front. Charles Oakley. He's 5 of 9. He has 13 points. But only one rebound in 18 minutes for Oakley. Well, some of that would have to do that he was trying to guard uh, Tony Kukoc in that first half. And, of course, when you're guarding him, you're out on the floor or being taken off the dribble. Does not put you in good rebounding position. Pippen. Now, Scotty Pippen hit his first three from downtown. Foul on Smith making contact with Purdue. But Pippen has missed his last four three-pointers. Of the Knicks coming out and going inside at every opportunity, in particular in transition, they'll look for Smith. This time they look, they look and find Charles Oakley. Not a comfortable post-up player, but he is comfortable stepping back and shooting that jumper. But you can tell, although Charles Oakley is not a guy who normally grimaces, he is in a lot of pain. And having to guard the likes of Pippen, as he did on that last sequence, or Kukoc in the first half, cannot be fun on that very sore toe. And according to the report earlier from Ahmad, he will make a decision. Of course, we have heard this before, but he says he will make a decision regarding an operation depending on how he feels after the game tonight. If he should undergo surgery, it will take place this week, and he would be out six to eight weeks. Tried a different shoe the other night. What he said was the last option before surgery on the dislocated toe. Here is Oakley. And the rebound comes to Hopper. Hopper and Armstrong in the backcourt. Purdue, Pippen, and Simpkins up front. And a hold on Smith as Pippen off the fake went to his right. And that's three on Charles Smith. Well, the Bills will look to drive the ball into the seam of the defense at every opportunity. No way that Charles Smith can stay with Scottie Pippen. He got off to a terrible start in this ballgame. Had to go to the bench and give way to Anthony Mason, who did a good job of slowing Pippen down. But then Kukoc got it going. Three apiece now on Smith, Hopper, and Starks. Armstrong tied up or foul. Let's see. It is a foul called by Steve Jarrett. It's on Ewing, his second. One of the staples of the Chicago defense, especially all those years that Horace Grant was here, was their trap after free throws. The Bulls have been able to put it on a couple of times. It's a, it's a token three-quarter, 2-2-1. Two, two, Not really designed to steal the ball, more to just slow up the Knicks and take them out of any kind of rhythm, make it slow for them to get into any kind of quick offensive play, and it worked on that last possession. Mentioned the departure of Horace Grant. He, of course, going on to Orlando. Scott Williams to Philadelphia. Bill Cartwright to Seattle. John Paxson to retirement, actually to the radio booth working alongside Neil Funk here in Chicago. Ah, Ewing! And the Knicks now lead 61 to 58. That all adds to the departure of uh, Michael Jordan. So this is certainly a revamped Chicago World Ball Club. Ewing trying to sweep it. And last touch. Well, the officials checking with each other. There's John Paxson. Handling the radio color commentary for the Chicago Bulls. He's had a marvelous career here in Chicago. Really well loved in this city. Of course, unable to play very much last year due to the problems with his knees. But the people in this town and around the country will never forget that three-pointer in Phoenix. Back come the Bulls. Three on two. Simpkins lost it. Starts off the steal. Oakley. Yes. Charles Oakley having a conversation with Scotty Pippen. Peace on earth. No, no, good will no. to men. They are good buddies, but that was something nasty that Charles said to Pippen. Pippen didn't react. Oakley has 15 points, shooting well, 6 of 11 from the field. The Knicks now lead by five with three minutes gone by in the third. Pippen for three. And Oakley 
rebounds. Ewing lost it. Smith off a recovery. Starks. Pippen with the box out. Pippen all the way. Looked like the Knicks just collapsed. They, they stepped away as Pippen drove the lane. Actually, John Starks stepped up in the lane with the idea of taking a charge. It's something that the Knicks have worked on in their last two practices, but actually the athleticism of Scottie Pippen was enabled him to avoid Starks, but John really didn't do a good job of taking that charge. Hopper wanted a three, but his foot was on the line. It's a two-pointer. Here's Pippen trying to go glass. So Pippen after the, uh, the good start, not shooting well, starts with a change of pace, and it will count. It's a goal, Ted. Beautiful move by John Starks to give the Knicks a 67-60 lead. Well, Charles Oakley and Scottie Pippen, former teammates here in Chicago and good buddies. But after that jump shot, Charles Oakley turned to Scottie Pippen, who just totally ignored him, kind of looked over to uh, our table here to see if we heard what he said. We didn't. And I'm sure you would have passed it on. Huh? <laughs> A terrible thing happens in this game, Marv, when you start to think, and really that's been the problems that John Stark has had in the beginning of this year, worrying about the perimeter shot because it's Pat Riley turned out. There's so many other things he can do to help this ball club. He used to be one of the best defensive guards in this league as far as guarding head up on people, taking charges and whatnot, and he can do that help this ball club on those nights when he's not shooting particularly well. Pete Myers has just checked back in. Saw his pass intercepted by Charles Oakley. Myers guarding Starks. Ewing played by Purdue and Triple T got it to Oakley. Rebound Purdue. Well, Charles frustrated with himself there. Another good pass by Patrick Ewing set him in for what should have been a dunk. But Charles just does not have that kind of explosion. He never had it even when his feet were feeling much better, but he certainly doesn't have it now. Pippen was stopped, and he's called for a travel. That time, it was played well by Smith. Yeah, John and Patrick having a little discussion. Actually, right before that, John saw a little bit of lint on Patrick's mustache. And, really? Yes, I, I, I thought he was doing that. Matt, uh, you are so <laughs> I, observant. I, these things. I have never heard a color commentator point that out. Oakley decides to pop it back out. Here is Smith. These are the things we don't get from other people. It is, it is important stuff. Uh, yeah, that is a uh, kick ball, making for a new 24. The Bulls are only one of seven from the field here in the third quarter. As Bill Wennington tries to start this fast break and does, as he put that long leg out there, Charles Oakley, who's not been very mobile in this particular ball game, looked much, much better in the Thursday night game against Cleveland. But as Pat Riley pointed out, he had had a number of days off before that performance. Scotty Pippen is two for his last ten. This after the good start. He has 18 points. Tony Kukoc providing the spark, though, in the first half. With 14 off the bench. Tony is back on the floor. Ewing. And he'll go to the line. His fourth foul. Patrick just has a good feeling about every time he gets the ball inside. He has a pretty good idea of what he wants to do. If that double does not come down quickly, he's going to make a definitive move as far as his offensive opportunity is concerned. As will Purdue upset with that, as he's been in foul trouble throughout much of this ball game. Bill Wennington, who's set to come in, has three personal fouls as well. And this is where the Bulls are really missing Luke Longley, who would normally be the starter. Talked to Luke before the game, and he said he's probably another week away before he is able to get out and uh, really get involved again. He has that stress fracture in the fibula. There is Luke Longley, who had some good moments last season against the Knicks. And this is where the Chicago Bulls also miss Bill Cartwright because Cartwright played Ewing so well. He was able to keep him off the blocks, push him outside. It's another factor there, Cartwright and Ewing were very friendly, had great respect for each other when Cartwright was with the Knicks, so you didn't get the same kind of ferocity from Ewing, I thought, in going up against 
Cartwright. The shot clock. He's a lot of it, a bit of a psychological thing there. Well, actually, if you looked at him, Marv, over the years, Patrick had some very good scoring games built against Bill Cartwright, but what Bill did was wear him down with that physical pounding, pushing him further and further out of the court. He used to be able to play that way in the low post. Of course, this year, not able to extend that arm, has really changed low post defense. That's why Pat Riley wants to go inside of you and you take advantage of it. Scotty Pippen has called for the trip. That is his third foul. Scotty unhappy with the call there as he steps out to just try to make John Starks go wider and stuck the leg out there and the little trip by John Starks drew the foul. Oakley. Good set up from Hopper. Surprised Oakley, but he was able to recover to receive the pass. And Weddington collects his fourth foul. So Hopper will go to the line. We also mentioned that how important Bill Cartwright was to this team, even though he didn't play a lot of games or play a lot of minutes, but Scott Williams, who's now in Philadelphia and struggling there, was another big body that the, the Bulls got a lot of use of, even though uh, you know, Scott Williams only played about half the year last year due to a lot of injury problems, but it always seemed that the Bulls had big bodies to throw in there. Stacy King before Luke Longley got there. Charles Oakley, three of four at the line. This is the second of our NBA Christmas Day doubleheader. Earlier, Denver defeated Seattle 105 to 96. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, high man for the Nuggets with 23. Rodney Rogers had 22. The Nuggets 105 and the Sonics 96. Here with five and a half to go in the third. The Knicks lead the Bulls by nine. Myers on a fadeaway. Pete Myers with his second field goal. He has four points. New York Knicks come in at 12 and 11. They have dropped four in a row in six of their last eight games, while the Bulls at 12 and 12, and they come off a win at home over Indiana on Friday. Ewing really fell back to the Chicago bench. Oakley again, a beautiful pass from Ewing. Well, not a smooth possession by any means, but Patrick Ewing keeping his head up all the way on a little draw and kick move, finding Oakley going to the basket again. They really have had terrific communication in this ballgame. Nicely done, Scotty Pippen on a spin. Pippen has 20, and the Knicks now lead 71 to 64. Pat Riley calling a play now for John Starks, wants to see if he can't get him involved a little offensively. Actually, they found uh, Smith on the first curl there. They're supposed to let that go as uh, Charles Smith walked with the ball. Scotty Pippen, who can do some damage in the low post, especially against Charles Smith, who just does not have the lateral movement to play Pippen, whether it's outside on the floor or inside underneath, as Pippen just wheeled on him very easily. Scotty Pippen is the only man in the NBA leading his team in scoring, rebounding, and assists, and also leads the Bulls in minutes played, block shots, and three-pointers made. Pippen toasting up on Smith. Basketball count. The foul before the shot. It's on Smith. That's his fourth. And Charles is hot about it. I'm a little surprised that he didn't claim that Scotty Pippen hooked him with the left arm as he tried to make that move. And Charles Smith averaging just under four fouls per game. That has been one of his problems, getting in the early foul trouble. Myers make it three for three from the field. For the one time, Nick Pete Myers. Nick's now in 71 66. Well, since Pete rejoined the team, he has really had problems with his offense. Always a defensive guy. And any kind of offense he can give him is helping. Here's the kind of defense that he can give him as he drew the charge on Patrick Ewing. And Patrick Ewing vigorously argued and was hit with a technical foul. has been very much into this ball game. Playing beautiful basketball here, losing his control a little bit. This has happened to the Knicks from time to time where they may get mad at themselves, get mad at referees, get mad at Pat Riley, and they just don't keep their emotions. Here, Pete Myers trying to trail outside and follow John Starks, and the foul is called on the Ewing block, but it really looked like Pete Myers threw that hip into Ewing and took the flop, and that's exactly what Patrick Ewing thought and told the referee all about it. 
Pitch. He was not pleased with Nolan Fine and was immediately hit with the tee. The Nick lead is now four with 340 remaining. And the third, Pippen with a one-on-one move against Anthony Nation. It brings the Bulls within two. The Knicks call for timeout. Well, with the floor spread, and Kukoc and Pippen have had their way with the New York players as far as taking them off the dribble. New York's help just comes too late as Mason was under control. Scotty Pippen. So the Bulls with a 7-0 run. They've hit their last four shots, and they trail by only two. severe foul trouble. Patrick Ewing has been reading the double team well all night long, mainly because he has looked to the other side of the floor. This time, Pippen blocked his vision. Patrick just tried to get rid of the ball. And the turnover and fast break opportunity. As Pat Riley said, I have seen this before. I don't want to see it again. But the Knicks have to continue to go inside to Ewing right now because the Bulls' centers are in foul trouble. Both Wennington is on the floor now. He has four. And uh, Will Purdue has four fouls. And Derek Harper has four fouls. Harper replaced by Greg Anthony. Armstrong, an 84% foul shooter, has tied the game at 71. Here's some pressure by Myers against Anthony. The Bulls still feel they can pressure the Knicks. They have turned it on and off. Oh, Oakley fires one high and far. That was picked off by an injured member of the Bulls, Larry Kristoviak. Phil Jackson feels that he can still, from time to time, turn on the press against the Knicks. Well, they feel the Knicks are getting rattled, and they used to work were so successful with it back in the Horace Grant, Pippen, and Jordan years. And normally that's why Anthony Mason is so important to have on the floor. He handles the ball so well. That ball just slipped out of Oakley's hand. Kukoc isolated against Oakley, who was able to slap it away. At least four on the shot clock. Oakley has Patrick Ewing there, but Patrick Ewing on a rather sizable ladder wouldn't have been able to deal with that one. It just slipped out of his hand. It would have needed a Harold Carmichael-type <laughs> leaping catch. <laughs> Scotty Pippen and Charles Oakley battling for the ball. Oakley got to it and was out of bounds. And uh, he and Scotty again involved in a conversation. Nice play, Charles, catching it but one foot out of bounds. That was a friendly discussion. Yes. Next the tied at 71 with 2.35 to go in the third. Good coach for Pippen for three. Rebound Ewing. Tosses down to Mason. Anthony Mason with a good move over Pete Myers. The Knicks lead 73-71. And a touchdown pass from Ewing. The Knicks had a lot of success with it against the Cleveland Cavaliers on Thursday, primarily with Oakley throwing a long pass to either Mason or Charles Smith with the Knicks releasing on the jump shot to get some easy hoops. Mason switching off to Armstrong. Two minutes to play in the third quarter. And a tripping foul called on Starks. Starks very close to an explosion and then able to catch himself. And now just a little smile on the part of John as really it was not a friendly smile as he's upset that he is coming out of the ballgame right now in favor of Hubert Davis. Because of his 14 foul, he understands that. But John has had problems picking up these fouls. His normal, tough, aggressive defense always involved being very handsy, pushing, shoving, using the leg from time to time. And he is not adjusting as well here with the leg stuck out and the little trip on Pete Myers. Clearly a foul. But this has happened to John Starks throughout this whole year. Pat Riley not upset with John Starks there. He is upset with the official. So four apiece on Starks, Hopper. And Smith. Pete Myers has given this club a lift off the bench. He has eight points. And he's tied the game for 73. Here's pressure again. Anthony and Davis. 
Davis now in the backcourt. Ewing, Mason, and Oakley up front. Anthony for three. Run down by Oakley. Well, the Bulls are plugging the lane now when the ball goes inside to Patrick Ewing and the double team happens. They're blocking off that lane cut, and the only pass Patrick has, or what he thinks he has right now, is the pass back out to the corner. Ewing, double team. Not a good shot. He forced it. Try to hit Pippen on the hop. And the ball goes back to New York. Normally you want to bounce pass in that situation, but that wasn't going to work. That was too hot to handle. Patty, uh, uh, Scotty just signaled to, to Pete Myers, get that one up in the air. Let me try to alley you dump that thing. They understood each other. A steal by Pippen. Pippen all the way. And he hits. Just the foul. Well, in this situation... When you commit a foul, you want to do it with enough steam to not allow the shot. Hubert Davis called for the foul, but did not prevent the shot by Pippen. Well, you know, Hubert Davis is carrying that soft label defensively that he is not physical enough, and I'm sure that's on his mind here. He wants to try to get the arms of Pippen from getting up in the square, but really doesn't do it hard enough. We saw a play early on in the first half where Derek Harper didn't even see the hit Pippen as hard, but he kept for making the layup. Unfortunately for you, Batavis, when you're going bad, those are the things that happen to you. That steal by Pippen is fifth of the game. Not able to convert with a three-point play, but he's given the Bulls a 75-73 lead. Steve Kerr has checked back in. So Kerr and Armstrong at the guards. Just under one minute left in the third. Hopefully. Here comes Armstrong. And the Bulls with their biggest lead of the game, a margin of four. And the crowd is into it now, but it's always going to take the Bulls to get them involved. They're not going to cheer for nothing. Armstrong oh. trying to go around behind the back and then got it to Pippen. Gilbert Davis with the rebound. We now have 15 seconds left in the third quarter. I'm told that this the most enthusiastic that this crowd here at the United Center has been all season. Anthony fires. Hornet shooting here in the final minutes of the quarter. That's the end of the third. Scotty Pippen lifting the balls. 24 points in all. Nine rebounds and five steals. The Bulls by four after three here in Chicago. We'll be back after a word from your local station. And back in Chicago, a fine-looking Santa Claus as we uh, head to the fourth quarter with the Chicago Bulls trying to make it six straight on Christmas Day. They leave the New York Knicks 77 73. The Knicks with an 18 point third quarter shot eight of 17 from the field in the first Chicago with a hot start in the third and finished seven of 19. A 15 2 run though by Chicago to end the quarter to take the four point lead. Scotty Pippen guarded by Anthony Mason. Shot clock at one. And a foul is called. Nolan Fine with the call against Anthony Mason. That is his third. Well, as so often happens, Scotty Pippen winds up with the ball with the shot clock winding down. There's about three seconds to go here. Knows he has to get it up quickly. Uses the left hand. Forced that way by Anthony Mason, who actually played good defense on the play. He's really unhappy with the call, but one of the reasons why Scotty Pippen's shooting percentage is always down a little bit more because he's that kind of player. When the triangle offense breaks down where a shot hasn't appeared and now you're under that 6-5 second area, he has to find a way to invent a shot. 26 for Pippen. And the Bulls lead by six. Again, the Bulls looking to trap. Offer thought he was fouled by Wennington. Offer and Davis at the guards. Ewing, Oakley, Mason up front. Davis not able to hit. Rare drive for 
Gilbert Davis. But a good idea, Mark. Right now, the post game is not working. The Bulls do not have a shot blocker in there right now, other than maybe Scotty Pippen. They should want to drive the ball to the basket, take it strong, force the Bulls to foul them, because they're not going to block a lot of shots. And the shot clock right now. It's a two. Pippen lost it. lost it. Substitutions for the Knicks. John Starks and Charles Smith replace Hubert Davis and Charles Oakley. Oakley with 18 points but only three rebounds. The Knicks with a four game losing streak. The last time they lost five in a row was November of 1990. They lost four straight last February. They lost in Phoenix, you may recall, as uh, Ewing is able to get off a turnaround jump shot, and it leads to the three-on-two. Myers, call for charge, offensive foul on Pete Myers. Remember, the Knicks lost in Phoenix, and then Pat Riley took the team on that secret flight to Reno, Nevada, before hitting Sacramento, and then they went on to win. 15 straight. Are you intimating that the players might be thinking they might get a vacation? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I did ask Pat, are there any secret trips planned? And uh, he said he's mulling it over. Might be a surprise. <laughs> Scotty Pippen rebounding the John Starks miss. Uh, New York had four offensive rebounds in the first quarter, consciously going to the glass. They've had one since. for the Knicks. Mason down the left wing side. Went to the left hand. Wall and wall by Anthony Mason. And a technical foul has been called against the Knicks. And apparently John Starks has been ejected. at what developed. Well, Pete Myers is definitely involved, and Pat Riley right now furious with referee Bob Delaney, as apparently John Starks has been thrown out of this ballgame, and Pete Myers, who has that ability to get under your skin, he's a feisty player, always banging into people, always has a little word to say, obviously did something to get under John Starks' skin. Yes, when Pete Myers was a member of the New York Knicks, he and Patrick Ewing had... Uh, some problems during practice sessions. In fact, there are some who believe that led to the departure of Pete Myers, who was an important player in terms of the pressing defenses of Rick Pitino. But John Starks has been ejected. Let's look at the, in the middle of your screen here. Here's where all the action is, where John Starks and Pete Myers are. Let's take a look and see what happens. Trash talking in the tawny. And John Starks is headed back to the next dressing room. He has been tossed. 9.37 remaining. In this fourth quarter, we'll be back in Chicago in a minute. Well, John Starks was ejected. Pete Myers also hit with a technical foul. Uh, here is a look back at the scenario. John Starks is going to put too much steam on this pass to uh, Pete Myers. Referee Bob Delaney right underneath the basket on top of it. View that as an unsportsmanlike act and tossing John Starks out of the ballgame with just one technical foul. You can do that. And also, Pete Myers is going to get a technical foul for taunting after John Starks threw the ball. So Steve Kerr will shoot a technical free throw for Chicago, and we'll find out who will shoot it for New York at the other end. Yes, this is unlike a simultaneous double technical since one technical was called and then the other was called a moment after they both shoot the technical fouls. 
will be Hubert Davis shooting the tee for the Knicks. So that was, was a judgment call by Bob Delaney because often you will see now a change. Davis was walking over to take the shot, but instead it will be Hopper shooting the tee. You will often see a player throw, throw the ball and an opponent and will not necessarily be ejected. But as, as you mentioned, they are trying to cut down on the unsportsmanlike type conduct plays and all the taunting that uh, has taken place in recent years. So John Starks has had it. No question there was a, too much of a hard pass by, by John Starks. And really what we don't know, Marv, is what has been going on throughout the ballgame when Starks and Myers have been involved. And only the three officials are very close to the action. No, if anything, has been going on. 79 of the Knicks, 75. Hopper diving for it and gets it to Ewing. Good play by Derek Hopper. And here's Hopper blowing by Kerr to bring the Knicks within two. Myers did not like what he felt was a handshake by Davis. Wennington watched by Ewing. Kuko checking the clock. Five of the 24. And Kuko is fouled. Fouled by Smith. That's five on Charles Smith. Well, the Knicks will get Derek Harper an opportunity to beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. It's the old Detroit play that Joe Dumars used to run so well with Bill Lambeer. Give him that look, see if he can take his man off the dribble. If not, he would call Patrick over to run the two-man play. But Harper easily blows by Steve Kerr to the basket. Second team foul committed by the Knicks. The Bulls do not have any. Bill Jackson is Myers and Kerr in the backcourt. Kukoc, Pippen, Wennington up front. Here's Kukoc going one on two. <laughs> Traveling violation. Well, in the first half, Tony Kukoc victimized everybody, in particular Charles Oakley. Charles Smith had his problems defensively. Let's give him credit here. The last three or four times he has really shut down Tony Kukoc by taking his left hand, his strong hand away, just making him do something else, and has forced Kukoc into some errors. Illegal defense call for the second time on the ball. So a technical foul awarded. And Pat Riley all the way up to midcourt. And Pat, uh, Phil Jackson trying to figure out why he's allowed to come up to Phil court in full, uh, half court to get the explanation from Steve Jabby. But clearly Bill Wennington was below the free throw line. And in the as Patrick Hewitt was up above the top of the key. Well, Derek Hopper missing that previous technical. Pat Riley changes back to Hubert Davis. The final stat line on John Starks, three of six from the field, eight points and five assists. The Bulls 79 of the Knicks 78 and a foul called on Curry. You get the idea that Derek Hopper feels he can do what he wants against Steve Kerr. Oh, Steve Kerr, not the best defensive player in the world, but he is a smart defender in that he will give ground, give angles. But right now, this is a tough assignment for him because Gerald Harper has that ability to put it on the floor and get in the lane. Ewing lost it. Pippen has a two-on-one with Kuko, but the Knicks able to hurry back. Here's Kerr for three. said before I could say it and that's what he does so well one of the best in the league all time percentage wise Bulls by four Ewing changed his mind but that time the pass off the mark but last touch by the Bulls a break for the Knicks well Pippen and Kukoc couldn't convert on the fast break opportunity but Kerr spotting up well beyond the three-point line that was really the old NBA three-point line where a lot of the players seem a little bit more comfortable Ewing, again looking pass rather than shot, and a travel call on Davis. Patrick Ewing does have six assists, equaling his season high, but I, I can't recall him looking for the pass as frequently as we've seen here this evening. On several occasions, he's gone up in what looked to be the start of a jump shot and has changed his mind. Oakley able to handle one difficult pass and score, but uh, not the case for the last two. Kerr just changed his mind and was bottled up. Harper off the steal. Try to lead Mason off the dribble, and Kerr defeats.
deflected it out. So the Knicks maintain possession. Checking back in. Bob, you mentioned why Patrick Ewing is looking to make the pass so much. The, keep, you got to remember that the Knicks have lost four in a row and have struggled. And you know, Patrick Ewing is the, the main man on this team, but he can't carry the load all by himself. He knows he has to get his teammates involved. He can certainly rebound. He can score, but he can't do it alone. He's got to get other players involved. All right, here comes Pippen. Scotty Pippen has gone all the way. We have seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Here's Pippen. Scotty will head back to the line. Timeout called with 6.54 remaining. In the fourth, Bulls by four. Bulls lead 83-78. Here's the trap on Hopper. 6.45 remaining. In this fourth quarter, Marv Albert with Matt Gukas and Ahmad Rashad from the new United Center in Chicago. Nice move by Mason. Could not Put it down. Beautiful spin move by Bill Lennington, who's playing with foul problems, but Anthony Mason likes to use that right hand inside. He just does not have the, the explosiveness to get up there and finish hard with a dunk. Five on the 24. Kukos for three. 17 points for Tony Kukos. That's his first from downtown of the ball. Lead 86 78. Ewing with the spin. Patrick Ewing getting the excellent position. He now has 21, and the Knicks are trailing by six. That was all set up by good ball movement. The ball finally went back up top after it was reversed one time, and Oakley with the little drop passes. Ewing may, making the move too quick before a double team can come. Bulls now using most of the shot clock. Pippen, Ewing snatches the rebound. In the past, we looked over the Pat Riley era as coach of the New York Knicks. The Knicks have been very effective in fourth quarters. Ewing, Ewing. cuts it to a four-point Chicago lead. But that has not been the case this season. And this is where uh, the new defensive rules have had an effect. The Knicks are not able to clamp down on opponents the way they have in the past. Foul is called. And it is a flagrant. Tony Kukoc taking a shot. Anthony Mason called for the flagrant. And Kukoc is shaken up. As I said, the Knicks have not able to been able to clamp down, but that, I mean, that was a, an over-aggressive move by Mason. Well, Tony able to beat uh, Charles Oakley here. Mason coming over to help out, and it, the obvious is the last couple of times that people have gone to the basket, the Knicks have taken hard fouls. The last time Hubert Davis was involved, he took one, and here Mason making sure that it's not going to be a three-point play. That was excessive, and that's why Kukoc will get the two free throws and possession of the basketball. Who coach only two out of five at the line. Well, Pat Riley <laughs> arguing in the call, but uh, I don't think there was any question about that one. No, it was a hard foul, and I don't think Anthony Mason's intent there was to hurt anybody, just trying to prevent the field goal, but he happened to hit Kukoc up in the head and neck area where he's going to be sore tomorrow. The ball's 87, and the Knicks 82. Kukoc on the drive, and it's rebounded by Reddington. Armstrong. He had that shot altered by Ewing, who was able to step up and help. At the guards, Ewing, Oakley, Mason up front. Davis playing for John Stocks. Again, the good move by Harper. This time he beat Armstrong. And the Bulls lead by three. 4.24 remaining. In this fourth quarter, the Bulls 87. And the Knicks 84. Pat Riley was telling us prior to the game that one of the many problems that the Knicks have had this year is 
Uh, the lack of rebounding, and they have been out-rebounded here today by the Bulls, 36 to 32. And the biggest problem is at the offensive end. And the Knicks, of course, a good defensive team, even with the new interpretation of the rules, a good defensive rebounding team. But for some unexplainable reason, not strong on the offensive boards this season so far. Seven. It's down to three. And Weddington stepped out. Good defensive sequence by the Knicks. So both the Knicks and the Bulls have committed 17 turnovers, 17 apiece. They collapse on Ewing. Gets it inside to Oakley. They swing it around. Ewing came up short. number four on Patrick Ewing. And Ewing did not allow the shot. Well, a difficult job for Patrick Ewing in the open floor, trying to keep in front of uh, Scotty Pippen with a little hesitation move and tiny crossover to go to the left side. Patrick Ewing, all he could do was grab on and hold, but made sure that Pippen did not get to the basket. He's a 70% free throw shooter. He's now 7 of 10 at the line. Scotty Pippen with 28 points, 13 rebounds, five steals. Off the back tap, it's rescued by Pippen, who's fouled by Davis. And with the Knicks over the limit, Pippen will go back to the free throw line. The Tex winner, the assistant coach for the Chicago Bulls, saying how important it was for Scottie Pippen to be a 50% shooter for the, the Chicago Bulls to play, play well. Obviously, 9 for 25, well below that. But Scottie Pippen, very offensive-minded and very active and does so many other things out on the basketball floor, as we pointed out so many times tonight in these various statistics. But has had his ups and downs at the line. The Bulls 89 and the Knicks 84. Davis like he was going to unleash the jump shot. Oakley to the left hand. And here's Pippen. Kukoc is fouled. Tony Kukoc with the feeling that he can get the step anytime he wants on Charles Oakley, and he went for the drive, and Oakley was called for his third. Well, it's such a big factor when you can spread the floor, especially the New York defense. A lot of the players out there just do not have the kind of lateral movement, in particular Oak Oakley and Ewing right now, and a guy like Kufo going against or Oakley or Mason has that advantage, and not being able to hand check like he used to in the past to slow that man up really helps players that can put it on the floor and drive to the basket. The Bulls with a seven-point lead and a timeout taken. Timeout called by the Knicks with 3-10 remaining in the fourth. Can you recall any big scoring days on Christmas? <laughs> I think I had four once. <laughs> what a marks guy. It counts and the foul. Patrick Ewing will go to the line. Well, Patrick has more than held up his end of the bargain today as he has just tried to do everything. Ball getting inside. Nice feed by Davis. Is Patrick able to back into and overpower Bill Wennington? It's interesting that Pat Riley is giving Hubert Davis a chance down the stretch here. Hubert has been in the doldrums. Actually, Greg Anthony is the best three-point shooter on the Knicks and can make other things happen, but Davis is getting the shot here. And Hubert, a player who was benched the other night in the game against Cleveland, played just the, the final minute. That was it. Three-point play by Ewing. He now has 26. And the Knicks are down 91-87. 2.45 to go in the fourth. And it's rebounded by Mason. have won three straight against the Bulls, five of the last six in the regular season. But the Bulls with the lead right here. As Chicago goes with a double team on Ewing, foul is called. It's Wennington, and that is his sixth foul. So Bill Wennington is fouled out.
Three of five from the field, six points in all. You can see there all Bill Wenning could, could do was try to put the forearm in the back of Patrick Ewing, not able to extend that arm. That really gives a gigantic advantage to a strong post player. And the Knicks continue to pound it inside, hoping either Ewing can score or if the double team occurs, toss it back out for a possible three. They're not left to start raining threes at this point, but Hubert Davis and Derek Harper certainly had that opportunity to look for one. 22nd timeout was taken by the Knicks. The Knicks have three timeouts remaining. Chicago has two and a 20 with 2.31 to go in this fourth quarter. The Knicks with four straight losses, six of their last eight. And Pat Riley during the course of his illustrious coaching career has never lost five straight games. The last time the Knicks lost five straight was back in November of 1990. Chicago by four. the play that the Knicks tried to run late in that game against Cleveland. Der and uh, Derek Harper was forced to drive the ball down the lane. They've had a lot of success going into Patrick Ewing. Something good generally happens. I'm a little surprised he didn't go in that time. Shot clock at four. It's down to two. Armstrong forcing. So once again, the Bulls are forced into shots they would not want to take. Good defense by the Knicks the last two times down, but they still trail by four. Ewing from Davis. And that was the call right from Pat Riley. Get headed into the big fellas. There's nothing Will Purdue can do right now. Wennington, of course, fouling out. Good entry pass from Hubert Davis, and the Knicks are down by two points. with a big bucket leading to a Knicks timeout. It's the Bulls 93 and the Knicks 89 with a minute 24 remaining fourth quarter. Four of 11 from the field. A minute 24 to go in this fourth quarter and the Bulls lead the Knicks 93 89. Ewing facing the double team again. Broken up. Try to force it in. Terrific rotation defensively by the Chicago Bulls. Shut down the two passes for a possible open shot. Armstrong. Purdue with the rebound, but lost at Hopper. On the steal. We're just under one minute for Manning in the fourth quarter. Intense throughout. Shot clock is down to three. Who goes? It counts. Yes, and the foul. <laughs> foul committed by Oakley is fourth, and Who coach will go to the line. Well, Tony looked a little bit tentative on this play. Actually, threw it to Will Purdue and then got it back. But this is what he's been doing lately for the Bulls. Spread the floor, let him drive. Actually, he was defending well, but the long stride and the long arms enabled him to finish. Three-point play by Kukoc. He has 23 for the game. The Bulls 96 and the Knicks 91. 26 and 5, 10 seconds to go. Fourth quarter, we'll be back after a word from your local station. 26 seconds to go, fourth quarter. Chicago with a five-point lead on the New York Knicks. That's the timeout situation. Scotty Pippen, high man with 29. Tony Kukoc is 23. Patrick Ewing leading the Knicks with 28. Charles Oakley with 20. 
Chicago Bulls come in, losers of three of the last four, and a 12-12 and record, and Phil Jackson telling us prior to the game that he'd just be delighted if the Bulls can win two straight games, though they won on Friday night. It's been a strange week for the Bulls. They lost to Cleveland last Monday, 77-63. When I heard that score, man, I figured they decided not to play the fourth quarter. <laughs> But uh, Mike Fratello and his Cavaliers holding the Bulls to a franchise low 63 points while the Knicks have lost four straight and Pat Riley facing the prospect of losing five in a row for the first time in his coaching career. And Greg Anthony remains on the bench. The best three-point shooter for the Knicks starts ejected earlier in the ballgame for throwing the ball. Strong move by Patrick Ewing and it brings the Knicks within three. 22 seconds to go. The Knicks are over the limit. So any foul is a two-shot situation right here. Pippen for Kukoc. The Knicks must foul. They can't get to the balls. And finally, they give the foul with 10 and two-tenths seconds to go. John Mason. Pat Riley was looking for the foul to be taken earlier. Well, sure, and there's only one real good foul shooter on the floor for the Chicago Bulls and B.J. Armstrong. All the others uh, struggle, although, you know, Scottie Pippen uh, around 70, Tony Kukoc around 70, but, you know, the one player that Chicago would like to have up there would be B.J. Armstrong. Well, Kukoc is 6 for 10 from the line, and the Bulls 23 for 36. Bulls 97 and the Knicks 93 so the Knicks take their final timeout Knicks do not have any timeouts left 10 and two tenths seconds remaining they're down by four here's Davis on the quick release and he hits it a two-pointer to bring the Knicks within two eight and one tenth second remaining in this fourth quarter and Pippen will inbound looking for the immediate foul. Harper went down and Ewing fouls Armstrong. Harper lost his balance. So Patrick Ewing giving the foul. That's his fifth personal. And B.J. Armstrong, who is just under 84% at the line, will, will shoot two. He's five for six today. And Pat Riley sending Patrick Ewing down to the other end of the floor to possibly set up their home run play. Miss or make of this uh, of these free throws. The the long pass will be thrown to Patrick Ewing, who will catch and probably try to kick it back out for a three pointer on the run. The Bulls lead by three, and New York, of course, is out of timeouts. That's why Patrick Ewing is down the floor right now. And here comes the 39 percent three-point shooter replacing uh, Oakley, which means Mason will try to throw this long pass to Ewing, who will look for Anthony Harper or Davis on the trail. The Knicks do not have any timeouts remaining. And Phil Jackson with the message, do not foul on the three-point attack. As Armstrong gives the Bulls a four-point lead. Here's that long pass. Hopper able to come up with it, and he is fouled by Purdue. So four and six tenths seconds to go. That is the worst possible play you could make from the point of view of the Chicago Bulls. It stops the clock. It puts Hopper on the line. He can cut it to a two-point lead, and many things can happen with four seconds to go. Well, Will Purdue was so intent on pressuring Patrick Ewing. Actually, the pass was over the head of both people, and the Purdue out of position and off balance almost forced himself to run into Harper to do nothing but foul him. All right, it's a, a three-point lead now. This Hopper try to miss on purpose for the possibility of getting the ball on a three-point shot, or does he try to convert and then the Knicks go for the steal? I say miss it and try to stop the ball back outside. Bulls by three. Four and eight, ten seconds to go. Well, Hopper does hit it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we're not sure what he tried to do. There. That's true. But the way everybody was crashing the boards, uh, it looked like he, I think the Knicks were expecting him uh, to miss it. But the Knicks are probably just going to have to and will commit a very quick foul here and again try the home run play. Well, Matt, this is a matchup of two clubs that have 
had their difficulties. The Knicks at 12 and 11 and the Bulls at 12 and 12. You look back to Christmas Day a year ago and what a difference. The Knicks leading the Atlantic Division. Record of 17 and 6. Three and a half in front of Orlando. And right here they face the possibility of a fifth straight loss and a 500 record. While the Bulls last season and this coming off the departure of Michael Jordan, remember, they were an enormous surprise with that record of 16-8, and eight, a game and a half in front of another surprise team, the Atlanta Hawks. And one player is probably directly involved with those two switches in the standings of the Eastern Conference, and that is Horace Grant going to Orlando, who is just zoomed by everybody, not only in the East, but Bob First Phoenix is there as well. And, of course, Horace Grant leaving this team has really hurt them severely. This team being the Chicago Bulls. All right, four and eight, ten seconds remaining. Pete Myers will throw in from deep in the backcourt. Patrick Ewing on the ball. The Bulls lead by two points. Myers got it into Kukos. That was nearly picked off by Anthony, and a foul is called. Greg Anthony almost came up with the steal. Your personal foul. And Anthony is six. The tough that uh, Ewing is called for the foul. Well, the pressure by Patrick Ewing on the inbound passer, Pete Myers, forced that to be a bounce pass, which is a slower pass, and gave Greg Anthony a chance to possibly steal that and almost force Kukoc into losing possession there. As Patrick Ewing had a, just a marvelous ball game in, in many, many areas and just could not get his teammates uh, to pick up the slack, although he made a lot of good passes, and a lot of that passing was contagious. But John Starks never really got the ball offensively and thrown out of the ball game as there is still life for the New York Knicks. Good coach, 7 of 12 at the line. 3 and 3 tenths seconds remaining. Charles Smith has replaced Patrick Ewing. The Bulls lead by 3. Now the Knicks lead, lead the long pass and a 3 point attack, but Curl slaps on Davis for 3! Yes! Gilbert Davis has tied the game with 4 tenths of a second remaining. Gilbert Davis knocks down the three-pointer. You'll recall it was Hubert Davis in the playoffs last season off the controversial call by Hugh Hollins, who was able to hit clutch free throws that beat the Chicago Bulls. But, Matt, you look back at this, and you have to look back to that foul by Will Perdue. It really hurt the Bulls, and it shows you just never know, even with seconds remaining. Well, this was a terrible pass. another chance in overtime. However, four tenths of a second, the Bulls will possibly get a chance to launch another shot with four tenths. We are in overtime with a minute and 20 gone by in this five-minute session. The game is tied at 100. There's Pippen off the stand and he's fouled. Scotty Pippen has gone all the way. He has played the entire game. Go to the line. Seven of Williams 11 first. at the, the free throw line. Herb Williams called for that foul. Scotty Pippen to the line. He'll shoot two. Phil Jackson telling us earlier that he feels that Scotty Pippen is just trying to do too much. But he has to be able to depend on some of his teammates. But here is Phil playing uh, Scotty, what, 51 minutes and counting. <laughs> well, Scotty Pippen knows he can't carry this ball. Club. Hey, Michael Jordan, the greatest player in the world, knew he couldn't carry a team all by himself. He needed Pippen, Grant, and Armstrong, and Cartwright, and the others. So Pippen really knows that he needs those other guys, but he knows he also has to carry a big burden. Davis thought he had, he had someone cutting. The Bulls lead by two. Well, this is the difficulty that the Knicks have with Patrick Ewing out of the ballgame. Charles Smith has been an effective post player. He made a good post move on his first possession, just couldn't finish the play. Mason can do some damage in the low post as well. Pippen setting up for the jumper. Rebound handled by Williams. 
just under three minutes to go in overtime. Pippen is now nine for 26 from the field. Knicks with the ball. The Bulls by two points. Smith for Davis. Rebound Herb Williams. Rebound Charles Smith. And he's tied the game at 102. A rare offensive rebound opportunity for the New York Knicks started by Herb Williams. This has been a big problem for the Knicks. They need it right now because they have nothing going at the offensive end. Nothing looks smooth. Pippen rejected. It will count as a goal tag. Paul on Williams. So Scotty Pippen gets credit for the field goal, and he gives Chicago a two-point advantage. Scotty Pippen slashing through the lane, getting a good feed from Armstrong, able to get that shot up quickly as Herb Williams has been a good shot blocker in this league for many years. Clearly goaltended that way. Smith fouled as Pippen came over to help out. Pippen and Kukoc on a double team, and Pippen charged with his fourth. There's Charles Oakley replacing Herb Williams. In overtimes, you have three fouls to give before you're in the penalty. You shoot free throws on the fourth team foul. And now Will Purdue sits down, replaced by the rookie from Providence, Dickie Simpkins, who started the game but has not played at all in the second half. The Bulls 104 and the Knicks 102. Again, they double up on Smith. Deflected out by the Bulls. 205 to go in this five-minute overtime. The best opportunity that the Knicks have to score right now is giving the ball to Derek Harper in a pick and roll situation right on that side of the floor. It's a game that saw the Knicks lead by as many as 11 in the first half. Good run by the Bulls. Got them back into it. Hopper could not convert. And it's handled by Pippen. It looked like the Bulls were comfortably in front down the stretch. The Knicks were able to get back into it. And they tied the game on a last-second three-point heave by Hubert Davis. The Bulls now have a two-point lead in overtime. Pippen around Mason, and he's hit. So Pippen will go to the line. Well, normally the Chicago Bulls come down and run their triangle offense. This time, Phil Jackson is calling a specific set play, and it's going to be a pick-and-roll situation with Scottie Pippen and Dickie Simpkins on the left side of the floor. But the whole underneath part of the basket is empty as the Bulls raised up, and the Knicks followed suit and left that driving opportunity for Pippen. Anthony Mason has fouled out. 8.6 rebounds for Mason, and now the Knicks are shorthanded. Ewing fouled out, Starks ejected. Charles Smith has five fouls. Mason is gone, and the Knicks without another forward, Anthony Bonner, who's back home in St. Louis for the funeral of his father. His dad passed away last week after suffering a stroke. Williams with Charles Oakley and Charles Smith. The Knicks take a timeout. Pippen is now 11 of 17 at the line. Minute 35 left in overtime. The Bulls lead by three points. Minute 35 remaining in overtime here in Chicago. The Bulls 105 and the Knicks 102. The Knicks with a four-game losing streak on the line. They come in at 12 and 11, and Chicago at the 500 mark at 12 and 12. Scotty Pippen with 34 points, two away from a season high. Also has 16 rebounds. Also has all of the five most points in overtime. Smith tried to put a move on Kukoc and nearly was stripped. Last touch by Kukoc. And nearly walked as it looked like he faked left, went right. Pat Riley took that timeout to kind of regroup and make sure his team was on the same page and knew what he wanted them to do offensively. They come out of that timeout for isolation for Charles Smith. You don't normally see that, but the Knicks don't have a whole healthy respect for Tony Kukoc's ability defensively out on the floor or inside. The Knicks are having trouble locating a shot. Out of 10 on the 24. Lombardman on a switch. Herb Williams gets it off. Herb Williams brings the Knicks within one. A minute 17 remaining. Well, the Knicks are just flying by the seat of their pants right now offensively. Not really sure where the offense is going to come from. They're so used to having Patrick Ewing and John Starks on the floor in these kinds of situations where they normally run their two-man plays. Next foul by the Knicks will 
Defenders gets through the seam, goes up for the sky hook, and able to knock it down for his seventh point in this overtime. He his team a three-point lead. And the Knicks take a timeout with 11 and 6 10 seconds remaining in this five-minute overtime. When we resume, it will be Nick Ball. The Knicks have one timeout left. Chicago with three and a 20. Now that man has had a magnificent. Christmas night here at the United Center. 36 points, along with 16 rebounds and five steals. Tony Kukoc also providing a spark. Knicks down by three. Looking to set up Davis, who was picked up on a switch. Final seconds, they can't find the shot. Davis this time is blocked by Pippen, and time works out on the Knicks. Pippen again, stop Smith. and 12. The Knicks fall to 500. 12 up, 12 down. They have lost five in a row. And for the first time in the coaching career of Pat Riley, he has lost five straight. Let's go over to Ahmad Rashad with the star of the game, Scotty Pippen. Here's Ahmad. All right, thanks, Bob. Scotty, you guys have had your difficulties during the course of the season, but today you put it all together. Yeah, we did. I think the last couple games we've started playing better. Guys are getting their confidence, especially Tony. He's given us a lot coming off the bench. How about you? You took over in this overtime, scored all the points. Well, I, I think the thing about us in overtime, we were a little back on our heels because we felt like we should have won the game in regulation. So I just tried to take over down the stretch of the game and create things for my team. And I was able to get to the basket. Who said this place isn't loud enough? This place rocks. I wasn't the one saying it. It's a great place. All right. Merry Christmas all right. to you. Thank you. All right. Back to you, Mark. All right, Ahmad. Yes, it was rocking here tonight on Christmas night at the United Center. Again, the final in overtime. The Bulls 107 and the Knicks 104. Coming up next on NBC, a special two-hour presentation. Earth 2, first contact. The Matt Gilkis and Ahmad Rashad. I'm Marv Albert saying so long from the United Center in Chicago. This has been the NBA.